Hello, tiny friends. Welcome back. Today I have this bag of kits and accessories. It came in one bag and I purchased it from Earth and Tree Miniatures Dollhouse Store. I've been holding on to this for quite some time. I'm going to combine some of these pieces and create something new. Let's see what's inside this bag. So I got this little shelf and I absolutely love it. It has some pegs for hanging things. So I'm gonna base this project around this little shelf today. Got a little wine bottle and some labels. I believe there was two wine bottles and I used one in a prior project. Got a bag of wine glasses and I love these glasses. There's four glasses and I don't know if they were intended for this shelf, but I so badly just want to hang them on this shelf. <laughs> now, it would definitely need some tacky wax because they don't sit in here that well, as you can see, but I am so persistent. I have just got to see what they look like. So I'm going to try to put these on the rack. Now, I'm not going to do this, but I'm dying to see this. And this is just so super cute. Yeah, I'm starting to think that these weren't intended for this shelf. <laughs> Adorable. Oops. <laughs> okay, so I got that out of my system. And now I'm moving on to see what else is in the bag. Okay, this little kit comes with some condiments. And you get a handful of bottles, different bottles a couple boxes of food got some cereal and pasta and then a bunch of sticker labels and they give you plenty of options to create these condiments there's mayo and honey mustard there's honey there's strawberry jam and vinegar and i did use the vinegar bottle for a previous project now these are too modern for the josephine house but that's why I'm going to create something more fitting. This little bag has some jam jars and a couple other jars. It also comes with some sticker labels. So there's a jar for Nutella and tea and then some vintage jam labels. Now I'm not going to be using these labels, but I do like them. Oh, and then there's some stickers for the lids. So there's a Nutella jar, which I do like. The tea jar. I'm not sure if I'll use that today, but these two jam jars, I'm definitely going to use. You get orange marmalade and strawberry preserves, and these are definitely homemade and were canned in the kitchen. And then I'll just save these two boxes for another project or a template, or do something else with them later on. The condiment kit is by Villa Miniature Design, and it shows you a picture of what your condiments look like. And they even have a Smucker's Strawberry Preserve, which I believe I have some in the fridge right now because I still eat that. <laughs> and just shows you what you can do. Of course, you can always switch it up because it does give you more labels than what it's showing, but this is a really cute little kit. Here's what the labels look like close up, and they have all the ingredients and nutrition facts that you can put on the back of the bottles. That is so cute. Now, I do see three little honey labels with honeybees, so I'm gonna use those because they do look a little vintage. I'm gonna swap out the sticker labels for some fabric on some of the jars. I have this piece of gingham cloth with blue checks on it, and it's the perfect size. And maybe use a different type of cloth for a couple of the other jars. But uh, yeah, this will look nice. So I'm using some fabric tack for this, and I'm just putting some around the top and around the side of the lid popping that right into place and then I can go ahead and wrap the cloth right around the lid. I've got a piece of string and I'm just going to wrap that around. I'm going to use a little bit of glue to keep this in place and then trim off some of the excess fabric.
Okay, so there's my first little jar and it's super cute. I'm just gonna put it on this shelf for now and make some more. I'm just gonna fill this little shelf with canning jars. I'm gonna use these three jars next and I think that the Nutella jar is perfect for this. So since I have three honeybee stickers, I'm gonna create three jars of honey. Since these two jars are clear, I'm gonna to have to paint them. So I'm gonna use a deep ochre. And I'm gonna add a little bit of water to this to dilute it so that my jars can still be transparent. Okay, for this little honey jar lid, I gave it a base coat of black acrylic, and now I'm going over it with some antique gold. I'm just brushing around the sides of the lid because they have these ridges, and I want the black to come seeping through in between each one. Now I'm gonna go over the honey jars with a little bit of watered down burnt sienna because this honey isn't processed. It was made on the farm by the bees, so I'm gonna give it more of a natural honey color. I eventually plan to add a small mud room off of the kitchen in the Josephine house, and I would imagine you would see a shelf like this in the mud room with some canned goods on there, or maybe a space where she's storing some canned goods, um, maybe hanging some aprons on the shelf, or. I don't know, I just, I feel like this shelf needs to be in there. And I would probably also store the fishing stuff in there. So um, 
I'm getting closer and closer to building that because it's just sitting on the surface of my brain and it's dying to come out. Um, but going back to this little shelf, uh, some of the pegs are loose and I'm just reinforcing them with some tacky glue so that they don't move around and I don't end up losing any over time. For now, this is going to be stored until I'm able to build the mudroom and place the shelf in there. But I had a mudroom in the old farmhouse that I lived in and it was also attached to the kitchen and it was an add-on. It was built with wood and you can tell it was an add-on and it had an, a concrete floor and it had a old barn door, a little door. It was just a small little space and the door didn't really fit the frame all the way. So there was a gap underneath it from the floor to the bottom of the door. And it had a, there was a, one of those, which I love, and I'm going to figure out how to do this. I'm really going to try to figure out how to do this, but there was a slap door, screen door, you know, one of those screen doors that slap shut. And I love that thing. And then there was the kitchen door. So we had the kitchen door and then the slap screen door and that went into the mud room. And then there was the little barn door that went out into the backyard. So I am very inspired to build that for the Josephine house. And I do have a screen door that I purchased specifically for this project. So I really do need to figure out how to make that door slap shut. And yeah, I'm determined to try and figure that out. <laughs> okay, so right now I am just aging the shelf a little bit with some black chalk pastels because that's just what I do. I can't <laughs> let it sit without some age on it. Living in the old farmhouse, we were in the country and it, it would snow in the winter time and the deer would come all the way up to the front door on the porch. You would see the deer tracks. But one time I was sitting in the mudroom and it was nighttime and I was out there when I smoked cigarettes and I was smoking a cigarette. Yes, I don't smoke cigarettes anymore, but I did then. I thought I was tripping. I was looking at the bottom of the door. And like I said, there was a gap that went from the bottom of the door to the floor. And then the steps were handmade wooden steps. <laughs> this is, I'm really going to try and make this vision come true in the miniature world. But I was just staring off at the floor and all of a sudden I saw this little mouse head peep up and, 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 and here's the thing, the space between the floor and the top step was a very big gap, like a, a, a big step, like you really had to step down. So for a mouse to be hanging on this ledge, it just tripped me out because I'm like, how did he get up to that ledge to peep in to the mudroom? But he peeped his head in. He saw me and that was it. He, he jumped back down and said, oh, no, not right now. And it all lasted for about a split second. So I thought I was seeing things. But yeah, that really happened. That little country mouse was trying to get in and he saw me sitting there and said, nope, not right now. And <laughs> what a funny thing. Like the mice can just climb wherever. And there was nothing for the mouse to climb on. It was just a straight wall like. And I'm just like, how did that mouse get up? that high unless he was crawling along the very edge of the concrete it was really funny <laughs> so I guess I I put a lot of my inspiration from that house into the Josephine house I, you know I was so in love with that house I was living there when I first purchased the Josephine house so I began working on the Josephine house in that house and I guess I just took that house with me and the soul of that house is now in the Josephine house. <laughs> oh. Okay, so right now I'm going over the paint with a satin varnish by Duraclear and I want them to be glossy but I don't want to use gloss Mod Podge. So this is the glossiest stuff I have besides triple thick, which I would think would be too thick to put on here. So um, I'm just going to give it a couple coats of this varnish 
Okay, for this little black lid, I'm just rubbing on a little bit of silver chrome paint by Testers just to make it look like an old mason jar lid. And then for the other uh, honey jar lid, I'm going to add a little piece of cloth to that lid. But right now, these jars are looking like peanut butter to me. <laughs> so I'm going to put the honeybee labels on here so that they won't be mistaken for peanut butter jars. Now I want to make some peanut butter jars. <laughs> That'll be some more jars that I can make. At least I'll know how to make them. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put the honeybee labels on them. And I'm just gluing these on so they have a longer shelf life. <laughs> and the label doesn't peel off later on. Last, I'm going to go in with some matte varnish by Duraclear. And I'm just going to give the labels a coat of this matte varnish. Um, I don't want them to be glossy. I just want them to have some sort of sealant to last over time. Okay, now it's time to put everything together and see what this little canning shelf is going to look like. Okay, tiny friends, that is all I have for you today. I think this is going to look really good in a mudroom. I even added the fly swatter to keep those flies away. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video today, please give it a thumbs up and click that like button. And let me know what you thought of this cute little canning shelf in the comments below. I think a couple aprons hanging off of this shelf will finish it nicely. As always, i like to thank you all for subscribing and welcome all my new subscribers. Thank you all for your support and helping my channel to grow. Until next time, tiny friends, I hope you all have a lovely day and I will see you all on the mini side.